You know, these days when I walk around the campus, I miss seeing the throngs of students. I miss uh, bumping into faculty and staff. I think we're all looking forward to being together on campus again. We're all looking forward to you know, that, that sort of one-on-one -on -one time with faculty and, and staff mentors and coaches. But also we've used this year to really go full blast on a number of construction projects and the quiet nature of the campus did allow us to make very quick progress on uh, some beautiful, beautiful new spaces. I'm so excited for alumni to come back. I think they will be so impressed with how much USF has worked to bring a facelift to our university and really bring a sense of community through the buildings, the unisense of the buildings, uh, through how modern we've become. For our returning students, you are going to find a, a lovely, renewed campus uh, with some beautiful new spaces that weren't here when you left. Uh, for our new students, we're really eager to welcome you to the Hilltop and to make you a part of our family. To uh, alumni who haven't been back to the Hilltop in quite a while, we've built out the Los Giavo Science and Innovation Center, which is really state-of-the-art learning space for our students in the, in the STEM fields. We're in the process of building an amazing hive, so a maker space for our engineering students. We are in the process of building out the War Memorial Gym, which is now becoming the Sobrato Events Center. We're in phase three right now. Uh, and phase four, uh, the Malloy Pavilion, which is gonna rise up on stilts, um, built over the uh, four-story underground parking structure and give the, uh, the teams a place to practice, which frees up the floor of the War Memorial. And then just uh, behind me, two amazing buildings in 150 apartments, which will house uh, a good chunk of our sophomores. And for the people who are being added to the Hilltop population, uh, we have uh, built out a lovely dining commons and a pavilion that stands uh, on what was a little used lawn uh, behind Lone Mountain, Maine. Uh, and now it's got a beautiful space with wonderful views of uh, Pacific Heights. The entire campus is spectacular and breathtaking. So not only the buildings and the nature, et cetera, but also the students, the faculty and staff. I'm really excited for what they're gonna experience when you open the hive, when you open the new residence hall, when you open the athletic facilities for folks, because I think they're gonna be thrilled about what USF has been able to do for them, what, this, what they can do while they're here, and they can continue to thrive. This is a place where you can thrive. For a lot of the young people that's coming here for the first time, be warned, you're going to be blown away. For those of you new to campus, you're going to encounter St. Ignatius Church. Uh, for those of you returning to campus, you're going to be happy to be able to be back inside that beautiful space. And the church is the very beginning of your college career with a, you know, a welcome liturgy and a, a, a new student convocation. Uh, you go outside afterwards and a drone will take your class photo uh, and the adventure begins. Along the way, you're gonna be in that church for concerts, uh, for talks, for liturgies, for ceremonies. The most important ceremony will be your commencement. And when you receive your bachelor's, your master's, or your doctoral degree, you're gonna walk across the sanctuary in that lovely, lovely space with tears in your family's eyes uh, as they see this moment of, of uh, completion, this moment of commencement uh, of the next chapter of your life. And it's gonna be in that gorgeous, gorgeous space. I think it's really special to have the opportunity to be at a university that is small enough to where you know your professors, your professors know you, the president knows you, he's able to talk with you on a first name basis, and you're able to build a rapport with the president. Uh, many schools may not have that opportunity, but I'm grateful that I have that opportunity here at USF. Even in my classrooms, having classes that are very small. A classroom where I'm able to just ask the questions that I, that I have, and being able to be as vulnerable and honest about my educational journey with those professors in a small, intimate climate is so much easier for me to thrive in.
We've expanded the sciences with our new Los Chiavo Science Center along with the Harney Science Center and have been updated and renovated to really highlight what we're able to do with the students and how we teach our students. A teaching format that really emulates what I think our students will experience after they leave USF. It's really modeled with that in mind. Over time, we've built a number of beautiful, new, important learning spaces within Harney. So there is a cell culture lab, which the Schroeders were kind enough to help us uh, to build. And uh, they donated a piece of equipment that is state-of-the-art equipment that's used by Genentech. So our students and our masters in biotechnology, as well as undergraduate students, can be exposed to the whole biotech industry in a very hands-on, cutting-edge way. We call it our mini biotech lab, and it has equipment that I think even our students were, would say is nicer than some of the other labs that they visited, um, even in biotech. And so students are getting hands-on learning, um, getting to really understand the methods of their, the techniques that they're carrying out. And so it's more than just listing it on a resume. Yes, I've seen that, but they've really experienced it. They really have learned it. We teamed up with a biotech company here in San Francisco called Senevex, who is developing an antibody therapy program. And our team here is developing a library of proteins that are uh, mutants of the protein that COVID uses to infect the human being. And you're generating this in order to determine if any future mutations can affect the antibody of this company. It really gives us the space to do what we need to do to really get hands-on experience in these lab areas, right? So like all this research we're doing, it's really helping to kind of give us an idea, those of us who haven't, like myself, really worked um, in the industry yet, what it would be like working on a big kind of scale project like this. We're partnering with a company. It serves for networking because you have that you know foot in the door already with that company. You're getting experience and uh, m most of the time, I think, if not all of the time, they help sponsor financially the project. We've reached a point that our community partners in the field know who we are and come to us for our students. They literally will say, USF students are the best students, give us some more of these interns. Yes, we're this Jesuit institution with this gorgeous campus in the middle of the city, but our students are very highly trained and have learned uh, you know, different aspects of the field exceptionally well. There are a number of other labs that have been rebuilt and built out within Harney. And of course, we're building this hive, which will be a maker space for our engineering students. And it's an engineering program that's much more welcoming to women and to persons of color. And so, you know, we have this project to graduate a kind of engineer who's really going to engineer real-world uh, solutions that are environmentally sustainable, culturally inclusive and just, and that lead us to fashion a future uh, which is going to be helpful for us and healthy for the planet. In athletics, we've spent a lot of time standing back, taking a look at the athletics facilities as a whole and determined that we need an athletics master plan to raise the level of the facilities to the, the, the marketplace where, who we're competing with. And so whether it be the baseball improvements, whether it be the soccer field returfing, the basketball locker rooms, now the Sobrato Center club level with the Hall of Fame on Golden Gate Avenue and the Museum of Social Change through Sports overlaid over the top of that, uh, we think we're making a significant improvement on the athletics infrastructure. I'm so appreciative of Father Paul and our teachers and professors, all the people who make things happen on the front side, but even the people in working right now to construct this beautiful space and having the opportunity to walk into this space behind the scenes, not necessarily just seeing the finished product, what it's done as most students will, but having that opportunity to meet them and greet them and just appreciate them for all of the work that they're putting in. And also just being able to see this, it's so beautiful to see the, the construction of this place and being able to see it in each and every stage. 
The Sobrato Center has been really fun to build because there's been this vision of creating a new VIP level, a club level, a basketball and volleyball gym that was going to take USF to the next level for its fan experience. And seeing that go from sort of a closed off, a little bit older building and really get walls taken out and modernized and spaces opened up. It's really exciting to see that come together and it's going to be a fantastic place to enjoy a game. Part of us elevating our programs is having world-class facilities. That is so critical. It's important for our student athletes and our coaches to understand we are committed to you. We're competing to recruit student athletes the best student athletes from all over and I'm really proud of that fact because I'm a donor to athletics and um, I've seen the changes over the last 50 plus years. Our facility is going to be one of the best in the West Coast Conference and the cool part is you know that old tradition blending with this new modern look and you know the new lighting coming in and that will have a big impact. I think it'll be really nice. It'll make it feel more professional. And I think that just helps even like your level of play of like feeling a little bit more engaged and making it a little bit more serious. And it'll be fun, I think, for the fans because they haven't been able to do anything this year. So it'll be nice to come back. I believe our, our student athletes choose USF because they know this is a program on the rise. You know, they see the how we finished last year and, and now with beating the number four team in the country, they see this program's going in the right direction. I think, uh, you know, they look and see our student athletes playing and, and see the freedom and, and the enjoyment that they have on the floor. When we're able to play in the new Sobrato Center, it's just gonna be, it's gonna be big time for the school, for the program, and just for the community. You know, when we come in, we have the new video boards, we have, you know, the, lo the new locker room and stuff like that. I feel like the new Sobrato Center just put everything together and just showcase, you know, the nice things that we do have and the nice things that we can put together for our school and for our community. Uh, one of my goals this fall uh, is to utilize all the incredible sites throughout USF. In particular, I'm creating uh, the Rising Dons Mentorship Program, which we're going to be partnering with the athletic department and working with community-based organizations citywide. And then throughout the year, we'll be utilizing different sites throughout USF to have you know, workshops and trainings and really get the young people exposed to USF in addition to having tours throughout the year. The next big project on the horizon is the Athletics Pavilion that is immediately east of Sobrato Center. It's actually elevated into the air over the top of the athletics parking lot. And the structural frame is what I love to look at because that's where it's all about. To be able to float a big box in the air over the parking and preserve the parking is like pulling a rabbit out of the hat. And we're actually going before the Planning Commission in June 2021 and hope to break ground on that aggressively by the end of the year, but more likely the first quarter of 2022. So the purpose of the Pavilion Project is really like directing traffic and, and easing up the traffic of the intersection in the Memorial Gym. So if you imagine in the fall, you have men's and women's basketball and women's volleyball all vying for practice time on the floor as well as competitive games all during the same time. And it's oftentimes a scheduling problem that's not possible to solve. So by adding the pavilion next door, it's going to relieve that stress and provide the facilities that are needed for those activities. Not only that though, it's going to be available for other activities, like if there's a large group that needs to you know, set down chairs on a stage and do a presentation over there. That's why we're actually calling the entire complex an events center, because it's more than just athletics, it's for the whole university. The new spaces that we have on campus will give our students more chances to gather, to connect with each other, new places for them to have programming, to do their concerts, their events, their plays their dance performances. That's the one thing USF needed in the last four years is more space to be able to do those sorts of functions and then we have it now. It will really galvanize people and get people to be drawn to the university. I think those improvements are huge and are definitely a step in the right direction. 
Thanks to the help of a lot of alumni, we were able to completely redo uh, Benedetti Diamond. And so the baseball field, we rotated it 90 degrees, a brand new surface. Uh, it's just a, a terrific place. I've enjoyed uh, going to the games. And just recently, we've been able to welcome the parents of the players back in the stands. I've been here at USF for 22 years, going on 23 seasons here in the spring, and I've seen just a wonderful transformation of the campus. These facilities are going to help bring more and more student athletes here that want to see themselves facilitate their dream as Division I athletes and competing at the highest level. And when you have a facility like this that is beautiful, that brings fans in here, it helps open up the dreams of so many university student athletes and uh, it's just, it's a wonderful place. When people return to campus, they're going to find a, an amazing new dining facility up on Lone Mountain. We didn't want our students who are living up here having to go down to the lower campus three times a day to grab a breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So we've significantly expanded uh, what had been the Wolf and Kettle. Um, and then on that lawn opposite, uh, there's going to be some outdoor seating, but it's covered. And then there is um, a new uh, kind of pavilion that's got a fireplace, that's got a pizza oven, that's going to be a coffee shop in the daytime and a brew pub in the evening. We hired the Northern California Architects for Whole Foods because we determined that the closest thing we could model was a whole food store. That when you walk into it, you can get coffee, you can buy prepared foods to take away, you could buy groceries to take away and cook yourself, or you could buy like Blue Apron kits and take away. From a construction perspective, the Dining Commons was especially fun to build because it was pretty much inaccessible and we had to figure out the puzzle of how to get the equipment in to even build that building inside all of those other buildings. And we opened up the existing building in order to drive equipment through it and actually get it done. So from a construction perspective, it, my favorite feature was just the ability to figure out how to build it. From an architectural perspective, the way it was designed to cantilever out over that retaining wall and the angles, just take that view and make it visible from everywhere in that entire pavilion, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's basically a spaceship. It's floating in air, looks out towards the east, towards the city, and has tremendous panoramic views. USF is absolutely a first-class institution, and we've been growing tremendously. Incredible buildings, our new dorms, uh, just bocce ball courts, a little bit of everything. The views are spectacular. Just having the state-of-the-art living experience here in the city, I mean, it's so hard to, to find that. And then having come down here to a a brand new field that's been built in the last three years. It's really nice for us to be able to recruit like that. For returning students, uh, these new residence halls uh, up on Lone Mountain offer full-on kitchens, um, individual uh, rooms or, or shared doubles, uh, soft seating, dining area, uh, good Wi-Fi, with some of the best views of downtown and Pacific Heights and the Golden Gate Bridge. I believe the new dorms that have just been finished and will open in the fall are truly a game changer for the whole university. It open concept, you know, you can walk through, get a good feel, see what's happening, connect with your peers, uh, a villa feel experience with the fireplaces, etc. It seems like it's going to be a wonderful place to hang out and grow and develop. The actual project was designed in a way to where it's comparable with new condominiums in San Francisco, which as you know sell for two to three million dollars. So the size, the scale, the living quarters are actually oversized for traditional student housing um, and are going to be very, very accommodating to the students' needs. The East Building has uh, several amenities like a small gym, 
uh, piano practice rooms, art work rooms. The West Building has a bocce court in outdoor study space. I suspect because each building is in quadrants that each quadrant will begin to have its own name, have its own feel, and different people will be attracted to different locations in the building. For alumni and friends of the university who have made gifts and have invested in the lives of our students, staff, and faculty, thank you. Come and meet the, the, the people who have benefited from your philanthropy. Come and experience the new spaces that you have helped make possible. And know that those spaces contain beautiful, wonderful human beings whose current uh, growth, whose current uh, education, whose current maturation is very much uh, the result of your loyalty, uh, your generosity, and your investment in them. After walking through this campus with Father Paul and seeing how loved we are by our gracious donors and alumni, it makes me feel proud to be a USF student. We have the best of the best, it feels like, uh, from our facilities to our professors to the connections that we're able to make with the students on campus. It feels good and it makes me even more proud and even more excited to get into the working field and be able to donate and have that same effect on future generations that are coming after me to be dons. It's about the students. It's about the community that we're building. And we want them to have a wonderful experience. By you giving, by us building state-of-the-art facilities, by us making this experience as the best it could possibly be, then the future is bright. And we thank you, I thank you, I know the students thank you for everything that you do for them. And uh, without your support, without your help, this isn't possible. But with your support, with your help, this dream is definitely a possibility.